Hi everyone, my name is Francesco Fantecchi and today I will be presenting a very particular and interesting videos on the 10 stocks that I am buying right now for the long term. We know that this is a very um, bearish market in which we are currently in and stocks are definitely underperforming materials and other kind of securities. So thanks to this video, I want to um, try to understand which stocks are going to outperform the market in the next three to five years, given the current uh, market conditions. So let's go ahead and uh, share this presentation with you. Basically, from uh, uh, here, we can understand that, that uh, the uh, title of uh, the video is exactly uh, 10 uh, valuable stocks to buy and hold for the long term, and it's presented to myself by myself, Francesco Fantec. So we are going to deal with a very short introduction uh, about uh, the current uh, uh, macroeconomic and political environment. We are going then uh, to talk about real estate investment trusts. And in particular, I will be presenting REXR, uh, IIPR, PLD, PSA. And then we will be talking about materials and in particular MOS and UE. AA, and then finally, we're going to talk also about healthcare and in particular CVS and PFE, and then about COST and DAC. So let's go ahead and start with the introduction. Uh, currently, we are uh, in a uh, very difficult market environment. As we have already said, the stocks uh, are in a uh, bear territory, a bear market, given uh, uh, mainly by three different factors. The, the first is uh, persistent inflation, which, is, uh, uh, which has gotten very, very um, near to 8% on an annual basis. Then we have military tensions. In particular, we are witnessing uh, the invasion of Ukraine from uh, uh, Russia, which uh, has uh, drastically impacted the stock markets in the last uh, few weeks. And finally, we have an increase in interest rates in the majority of the countries in the world. In particular, we are witnessing an increase in interest rate in the US and also in many European countries and Asian countries. So this um, yield the fact that uh, investors are looking for great value, high dividend uh, and uh, very good sectors to invest in. In particular, regarding this last point about the best sectors that investors are shifting their money to, we have uh, try to figure out the three of the most uh, important sectors that we can invest in right now and in which uh, uh, rich investors and sophisticated investors are moving their money. And these are real estate, materials, and healthcare. The first that we want to talk about are real estate investment trusts, also called REITs firms offer the opportunity today to lock up very high dividend returns in the order of 2 to 3 percent. Moreover, we know that inflation in general um, can be fought and we can cover against inflation by investing in real estate. The reason being that uh, inflation is generally linked to real estate uh, uh, prices so there is a positive correlation when inflation is particularly high. Uh, and in that case, uh, the real estate market is very, very hot and prices go up very rapidly. So this is the reason why a lot of investors are shifting their money into real estate investment trusts. Another important reason being that the investors during inflationary and uncertain periods, they look for uh, cash flowing companies with uh, high return capabilities. And in particular, real estate is a sector where investors are rewarded with high dividend yield and uh, high free cash flow generation, thanks uh, to the fact that uh, rates have to basically give 90% of their profits to their investors in the form of dividends. And this is one of the main reasons why we want to be invested in real estate during this period. So the first company that we will be talking about is Rexford Industrial Realty, ticker symbol REXR. 
REXR is a real estate company focused on owning and operating industrial properties throughout Southern California. It owns 232 properties with approximately 29.9 million, 27.9 million rentable square feet and manages an additional 20 properties with approximately 1 million rentable square feet. As we can see from this graph, REXR has undergone a very important uh, and uh, uh, strong uh, uh, bullish market in the last uh, uh, years, but it has undergone also a strong retracement that has brought the price of the company from above $80 per share to less than $70 per share. So this is one of the main reasons why we believe that uh, this is a company that can be bought here because it has undergone a very strong bull run. It's a very good company, but at the same time, it's undervalued with respect to past prices. And in fact, we can see that the company is a company that is growing uh, uh, year over year, both in terms of revenue and earnings. And even cash flow is rapidly expanding, which gives us the possibility to earn higher dividends in the next years in case uh, the company continues to uh, make strong cash flow, which of course uh, um, dictates the fact that the company has to um, give more dividends to its investor just to retain its uh, uh, dividend share uh, of 90% that is dictated by law. The enterprise value to EBITDA of this company is at the historical low of 39.61, which gives us the opportunity to believe that this is a company that is in undervalued territory. And finally, we have a large institution appreciation of this company, and in particular, JP Morgan and Capital One have recently increased their ratings for the company to overweight. The second rate that we want to talk about today is innovative industrial properties, ticker symbol IIPR. IIPR is focused on the acquisition, ownership, and management of specialized properties leased to experienced and licensed operators for their regulated cannabis facilities. Also, in this case, we are in a strong bull run by this company. We see that the retracement is larger than in the case of our. EXR, so this company is a little bit less strong than other rates that we are dealing with. And the reason being is that it's a company in a very, um, in a very new market, the cannabis industry in a very new industry. And this is the reason why it's scaring a little bit investors to uh, buy stocks of these companies. But that said, we can see that the company has very, very, very strong fundamentals. And it's uh, a particularly, uh, it's a relatively new company with a lot of gorgeous traction, which means that uh, its revenues, earnings, and free cash flow are increasing at a faster pace than REXR. So it's a little bit uh, more speculative, but it's growing faster. And in fact, we can see that the forward P is at 30.77, which means that uh, markets um, are basically discounting the growth uh, of uh, around uh, uh, six to eight percent per year for this company, but we can see from the financial that actually the traction has been um, quite stronger than that, and this is the reason why we believe that uh, this company seems to be overvalued compared to the whole overall stock market and to the overall uh, real estate uh, uh, sector. Finally, we have had only buy ratings uh, in March 2022, which uh, uh, poised this company for a great bull run in the months to come and also in the years to come. This is a company that is very, um, it's not very expensive right now. It doesn't worth a lot and really it can be a company that uh, uh, could 10x in the next uh, 10 years just because of the fact that it's one of the only company that operates successfully in the industry where it operates, which is the cannabis industry. The third company that we want to talk about, the third real estate is Prologis. Prologis is the global leader in logistics real estate with a focus on high barrier, high growth markets. As of December 13, 2020, the company owned and had investment ventures, properties, and development projects of approximately 984 million square feet in 19 different countries. 
The same as in the other two cases, PLD is in a massive bull run and it has undergone a correction uh, uh, with the, the overall stock market and the overall real estate sector. But as we can see, it is uh, um, basically recovering uh, uh, faster and uh, better with respect to other, to other uh, part of the stock market, which makes us uh, very bullish on these companies given uh, especially given the fact that uh, it has uh, basically undergone a very, very interesting uh, uh, growth uh, in terms of revenues and earnings and free cash flow in the last uh, years. And it's a very stable and robust company uh, whose dividend yield is uh, rapidly growing over time and is expected to grow even more. So if we lock today a yield of 3 or 4% on this company, we know that long term, you are this dividend yield is going to increase. So the investment that we are making today, that today yields, for example, three and a half percent, in some year it could yield the six to seven percent just because the company is obliged to um, give 90% of its profit as dividend to investors. The second reason why we are particularly bullish in this stock is that it appears to be relatively undervalued uh, to itself. And in particular, it has a PE ratio at historic low of uh, uh, 37.68. Finally, we have uh, had for March 2021, only strong buy, buy and overweight ratings. So also the institutional uh, ownership of, of the company and uh, uh, the institutional, uh, um, let's say opinion is uh, very bullish on the company as, uh, as much as the graph uh, and the fundamentals of the company are. The fourth real estate investment uh, trust that we want to deal with today is public storage. Public storage is a member of the S&P 500 and FT Global 500 and is a rate that prim primarily acquires, develops, owns and operates self-storage facilities. Their headquarters are located in Glendale, California. In this case, probably we are uh, witnessing uh, the strongest uh, uh, setup for uh, uh, real estate. In fact, uh, while uh, the overall sector was uh, basically falling down and undergoing a, a correction, uh, PSA has basically built uh, this uh, rounding bottom that uh, basically is developing this uh, bullish flag that can be uh, broke uh, on uh, Monday uh, 14, 2022. So this is the reason why we are watching with great great attention to public storage. And in particular, we can see that uh, the company the company's business uh, has uh, uh, gone very well from 2018 to 2020, but has drastically accelerated during, during 2021. And this is one of the main reasons why we want to be invested and we want to be bullish on this company. Moreover, it has a peg ratio at historical lows of 2.83. So even if the company is in a very bullish setup, it looks, it looks undervalued with respect to itself. And this is the main reason why we uh, want to be invested in this company. We also had recent rating upgrades by Raymond James, JP Morgan, and Jeffries. Let's now go ahead and talk about another sector. This sector is the sector of materials. We know that the sector of materials is very important, especially in an inflationary environment, because one of the most relevant components of inflation is represented by the cost of material. And of course, if the costs of material go higher, material company will uh, make more revenues and will have uh, greater gross uh, uh, margins, with, which will really translate, translate into higher cash flow every single quarter. Moreover, in case of military tension, countries uh, that uh, are uh, uh, involved with the war are willing to purchase ma materials to find their armies, uh, for example, steel, uh, aluminium, uh, uh, nickel, and all this kind of oil, gas, and all this kind of materials and commodities are heavily bought during uh, military tensions. And this is uh, one of the main reasons why we have chosen this uh, sector as one of the most representative of uh, this period. Finally, we have witnessed a recovery in the transports which generally forecasts a uh, bull run and higher demand for materials, because if uh, uh, transports are moving more, it means that more materials are being uh, exchanged. And if more materials are being exchanged, it means that there is a higher demand for them, and therefore material companies are expected to go very well uh, in this kind of uh, uh, macro picture. 
The first company that we want to talk about today is the Mosaic Company, ticker symbol MOS. The Mosaic Company produces and markets concentrated phosphato and potash crop nutrients in North America and internationally. It operates through three different segments, which is phosphates, potash, and mosaic fertilizantes. The firm also owns and operates mines, which produce concentrated phosphate crop nutrients, such as the ammonium phosphato, monoammonium phosphato, and ammonium phosphato products. So basically, this is a agricultural input company. And as we can see from the graph, it has broken a bullish flag that has uh, drawn during uh, the past week and it's headed to continue its uh, great uh, uh, bull run and uh, the second uh, bullish leg of this uh, uh, bullish impulse. As we can see the company uh, the company's business was going very bad up until uh, 2020 and then it completely overhauled its business in 2021 it was able to make a profit in 2020 and expand that profit in 2021 moreover it has a forward PE ratio at historical lows of 5.26 so it's it also looks uh, under value to it itself which is something that we are always uh, very um, delighted to see when uh, we um, basically inquire a company and understand if it could be a good fit or a good investment in a certain particular uh, macroeconomic environment. Finally, it's a turnaround story in which we are witnessing a lot of institutional interest. And this is one of the main reasons why we have chosen this company to be put into our March portfolio. The sixth company is Nucor Corporation, ticker symbol NUE. Nucor Corporation manufactures and sells steel and steel products. The company's steel mill segment produces hot rolled, cold rolled, and galvanized sheet steel products, plate steel products, wide flank beams, beam blanks, and H piling and sheet peeling piling products. It also sell bar steel products such as bloom, billets, concrete reinforcing, and mentioned bar and special bar quality products. It also engages in steel trading and rebar distribution business. So basically, it is mainly a steel company that uh, it's uh, uh, undergoing uh, a. Also, in this case, we seem to have broken this uh, bullish uh, flag here, and we are uh, um, about to see a continuation of the bullish trend. In this case, we know that uh, Nucor is one of the most uh, important steel providers in the world. And of course, if uh, there, there is an important war in Europe and armies are requiring steel, then of course, this company will have a much higher demand for its products, which is going to make its stock price going up. Also, in this case, we can see that the company has uh, undergone a very negative trend up until 2020, both in terms of revenue and earnings. It managed to make a profit in 2020, if it was, even if it was very, very slim. But in 2021, the company completed uh, its uh, uh, business overhaul. And this is the reason why we had a great business enhancement during uh, the past years. Moreover, we, we are witnessing uh, strong institutional investors that are heavily overweight in this company and are uh, uh, keep purchasing shares of uh, these firms. So this is one of the main reason why, in addition to all the other factors, that we are really seeing this company with a bullish perspective. The seventh company that we want to talk about is Alcoa Corporation, ticker symbol AA. Alcoa Corporation, together with its subsidiaries, produces and sells bauxite, aluminia, and aluminium product in the United States, Spain, Australia, Iceland, Norway, Brazil, Canada, and internationally. The company operates through three segments, which are bauxite, aluminium, and aluminium. In, also in this case, we have a company that is strongly uh, into the uh, materials business, and in particular, aluminium. Same thing as uh, um, the steel. We know that uh, if there are war tensions and if inflation is going to um, continue its persistence, of course, this company is a company that will de definitely benefit from uh, this uh, um, macroeconomic uh, environment. And, and we can also see from the graph that uh, also Alcoa has broken its uh, bullish flag and uh, could uh, uh, keep uh, its uh, momentum. 
Similarly to the other two companies that we saw, we had a business that was going down up until 2020, in which the company reported a loss. But it became profitable in 2021, and this is one of the main reasons why we are bullish on this company. And moreover, aluminium uh, has appeared to be one of the best performing commodities in 2021. And the main reason why is that it's uh, cheap materials that when other kind of metals go up in price, then uh, there is a higher demand for aluminium because it's cheaper and people can basically build a lot of different products thanks to uh, these materials and thanks to its versatility. Also in this case, we have uh, rate rated by rate ratings by Goldman Sachs and Jeffrey and overweight ratings by JP Morgan in the month of uh, March 2022. And so for all these reasons, we think that this company will continue to go higher in the long run and we are invested uh, in the firm for the next uh, three to five years. The next uh, sectors that we want to talk about is healthcare. Healthcare has many different reasons why it can be a very important uh, choice and a very important pick in this uh, macroeconomic environment. The first is that uh, healthcare is a defensive sector in a low growth economic environment uh, generally performs well because when other companies that generally grow very strongly starts to suffer, we know that healthcare will uh, retain its uh, trend growth. So investors are going to sell hyper growth companies to concentrate on more stable companies and companies that basically can grow in whatever macroeconomic environment we are in. So that's the reason why healthcare, it can really benefit from the current economic situation. It also has generally has high dividends because basically companies that make uh, a stable profit can uh, uh, basically benefit their investors by giving out a part of their profit as uh, dividends. Uh, moreover, healthcare is uh, a sector that has a lot of purchasing power due to the fact that uh, it's a sector with a lot of patents. So companies uh, uh, basically can defend their product and are generally the only ones uh, that uh, sell some kind of products. And this is the reason why they can uh, increase uh, the prices of their product without, uh, um, without having problems in marketing those products because they have uh, low uh, demand elasticity. elasticity. Finally, there are a lot of war tensions in Europe, as we already said, and this caused demand for medicines to go higher. So for all these reasons, we want to be invested in the, the healthcare sector. And in particular, the first company that we want to talk about is CVS Health Corporation, ticker symbol CVS. CVS Health Corporation provides healthcare services in the United States. The company's healthcare benefits segment offers traditional, voluntary, and consumer-directed health insurance products and related services. The company was formerly known as CVS Caremark Corporation and changed its name to CVS Health Corporation in September 2014. CVS Health Corporation was founded in 1963 and is a quarter in Woodsocket, Rhode Island. And we can see also in this case, we have chosen a company that has undergone a massive bull run in 2021. And this is one of the main reasons why we think that it can continue its uh, uh, momentum. As we can see also the fundamentals of the company has been a little bit stagnant during 2021 due to the pandemic and the recession, but they, the revenues uh, has, uh, um, have started re-increasing uh, at a very fast pace in 2021. Moreover, the company is a dividend aristocrat in the healthcare sector, and it's one of the company that uh, is benefit uh, still uh, most from this pandemic that uh, could uh, also per, um, continue for the next uh, months, if not years. And finally, is one of the most institutionally owned firms beside the companies in the S&P 500. And this is one of the main reasons why we have chosen this uh, company as a great pick for the next uh, three to five years. Also in light of, uh, of course, its dividend and uh, possibility for growth. Then we have Pfizer, the eighth, co the eighth company of this uh, presentation. Pfizer discovers, develops, manufactures, markets, distributes, and sells biopharmaceutical products worldwide. It offers medicine and vaccines in various therapeutic areas, including cardiovascular, metabolic, and pain under Eliquis, Chantix Champix, and Premarine family brands. 
biologics, small molecules, immunotherapeutics, and biosimilar under the e-brands, Xtandi, Sutent, Inlitia, Retacrit, Lorbrena, and Braftovi brands, and sterile, injectable, and anti-infective medicine under the Sulperazon, Medrol, Zitoromax, Vefend, and Panziga brands. As we can see also, Pfizer has undergone a very massive correction from its highs at $62, and it's now trading at around $49 per share. And this is the reason why we think that this is a great point to enter, to invest in this company for the long run. As we can see, the company has, of course, benefited a lot from the um, pandemic. It has uh, increased his revenue and its earnings a lot, but uh, it is still a company that uh, has a lot to offer and uh, probably it will be one of the main, uh, um, the most important company in vaccines discovery and manufacturers in the years to come. And so this is the reason why we believe uh, that uh, um, it's one of the best poised company right now to be bought. Uh, Similarly to CVS, the company is a dividend aristocrat in the healthcare sector, and uh, it's one of the most institutionally owned firms beside the companies in the S&P 500. The ninth company that we want to talk about is Costco Wholesale Corporation. Costco Wholesale Corporation engages in the operation of membership warehouses in the United States, Puerto Rico, Canada, United Kingdom, Mexico, Japan, Korea, Australia, Spain, France, Iceland, China, and Taiwan. The company offers sunrise, dry groceries, candle, coolers, freezer, liquor, tobacco, and their products, appliances, electronics, health and beauty aids, hardware, garden, and patio products, sporting goods, tires, toys, and seasonal products, office supplies, automotive care products, postages, tickets, apparel, small appliances, furniture, domestic, houseware, special order kiosks, and jewelry, and meat produce service daily and bakery products is also operate pharmacies, opticals, food cores, hiring aid centers and tire installation centers. So Costco basically is a company that is very diversified both in terms of uh, um, geographic distribution and uh, product uh, development. And this is one of the reasons why it's one of the most appreciated company right now in Wall Street. And um, this is basically a company that has uh, a very particular wholesale uh, business model. As we can see, it has uh, undergone, undergone a very stable and robust growth over the years, even if the margins are uh, not yet uh, very high, but they could increase year over year as the company is able to scale and scale over and over again. In fact, the company is a very successful company with a very peculiar and free cash flow uh, oriented business model. In fact, it offers basically a subscription based kind of, kind of uh, business model in which you cannot even enter into a, a Costco shop if you don't have the annual subscription, which of course is very good for the free cash flow of the company. And it makes uh, basically the money that the company makes over time more stable. It also looks very cheap uh, um, compared to itself. In fact, it has an enterprise value over revenues at historic low of only 1.11 and is one of the most institutionally owned firm besides the company as we have seen for uh, Pfizer and CVS. The last company we want to talk about is a shipping company and in particular uh, um, a company that uh, together with its subsidiaries owns and operates container ships in Australia, Asia, Europe and the United States. This company is called Danaus with ticker symbol DAC and it offers seaboard transportation services such as charting its vessel to linear companies. As of February 28, 2021, it had a fleet of 65 container ships aggregating 439 320-foot equivalent units in capacity. The company was formerly known as Danos Holding Limited and changed its name to Danos Corporation in October 2005. Danos was founded in 1972 and is based in Pyrrhus, Greece. As we can see also this company together with uh, its uh, uh, peers uh, has basically uh, overperformed the market in the, the next uh, few weeks and in particular it has uh, overperformed the, the transport sector. In fact, uh, while the transport were headed down, the company reported great, great results uh, for the um, 
fourth quarter of 2021 and this is the reason why it has basically undergone uh, a massive uh, uh, bull run that has brought the price from a base of 68 to a maximum of 100 and uh, it, it is now stable at around 90 dollars but of course uh, the um, forecast is uh, the break of this bullish flag and the continuation of the bull run in this case we can see that the revenues of this company has uh, have incredibly, incredibly uh, increased during 2021. The reason why I'm saying incredibly is that this is a company that is very stable. It generally does not have all this growth. In fact, it's very cheap. But as we can see in 2021, it had a very strong growth. And this is the reason why it has increased so much in price during the last two years. It has had a strong increase in revenues and profitability margin in 2021. And it is valued at approximately five times uh, the annual free cash flow from operation. So if we take only the free cash flow from operation and we don't include uh, um, basically CapEx, which, is, which are the costs to maintain and purchase new ships, then the company is just five times that. So if the company had to stop now, um, purchasing new ships and maintaining them, then in five years, the investment would be bought back, which is a very short period of time. And of course, this is not going to happen because this is a company that is still growing at a very fast pace. So the company looks uh, really cheap compared to its peers and compared to the overall stock market. Uh, it's a company that is not widely covered uh, with great appreciation opportunity. It's not widely covered, but it's definitely a great uh, appreciation opportunity in the shipping market. And uh, uh, for our uh, fund, it was one of the best, if not probably the best performer of uh, uh, the last uh, uh, year, year and a half. So uh, definitely this company is poised for another important bullish leg that could bring the company to double again in value in the next uh, uh, two to three years. And then from there, uh, keep appreciating in value at uh, probably a um, little bit slower pace. But of course, uh, the dividend is very high at around uh, uh, two and a half percent. And this is the reason why we want to keep uh, this company for the long term. That said, uh, this was uh, the end of the presentation. I thank you all for the attention and I really um hope that uh, you like uh, this video if so if you like this video and uh, you think uh, that uh, it created uh, a lot of value for you please uh, smash the thumbs up and subscribe to the youtube channel because we are going to have a lot of new content coming up soon regarding finance uh, stocks uh, investments uh, marketing uh, credit cards uh, and a lot of new topics are coming up soon so make sure you subscribe have a great rest of your day. Enjoy your friend here, Francesco.